At last, I've made it to the cage of fields and what a beautiful day I've picked here in North Mayo. Just to put the cage of fields in a simple context, back in the mid-1930s, a man called Patrick Caulfield was cutting turf in his bog. And lo and behold, he hit upon rock. For anybody out there who knows about turf cutting, you honestly should know that you'll never find rock underneath peat. But in this case, he did. And it led to a whole plethora of scenarios whereby we are now standing at the viewing point of the cage of fields here in North Mayo. It's an amazing archaeology story and Greta Burns, who's the archaeologist and manageress here at the cage of fields, is with us on a beautiful sunny day. I know it's a very simple overview of the cage of fields, but it's all about an amazing story of a settlement beneath a bog. Oh yes, well it's a story of a changing landscape over thousands of years, comings and goings through natural forces, through climate change, and also the human history, and the very human history. We can see a story here how farmers settled here about 3,800 BC, so almost 6,000 years ago. There was a big population of farming people here in a time when they had maybe a better climate than we have today, a little bit drier, a little bit warmer. Good conditions for farming, so very little bog land here. And they were settled here, uh, peaceful farmers, most of the, they had the land divided up into stonewall fields, a very comprehensive system of, of fields. Um, they were using the land for pasture, for grazing of cattle. We know now that they were actually milking the cows as well and eating the dairy products, either drinking milk or maybe making butter, cheese pr from it, but they were certainly using the, the dairy products. Um, and the significance of this is that this is the only place where from this time period, from this st Stone Age farming period, where you can see how the land was organised into field systems and how you know, extensive and uh, complex the whole approach to land management was. So when people come to the cage of fields to see what you've just described, what awaits them? Yeah. Well, when they arrive here at the visitor centre, we have a beautiful visitor centre here that was opened in 1993. It's a pyramid-shaped building, uh, won the gold medal for architecture for the architect Mary McKenna in 1993. Um, within the visitor centre, there's staff, very knowledgeable guide staff who will meet you. Um, we have exhibitions and a film. With, now, at the moment, our centre is actually still closed because of the COVID restrictions but the site itself is open so visitors can come, they can see the site uh, One, the field boundary around one field has been partially excavated so you can actually see these walls that were constructed almost 6,000 years ago you can see a dwelling enclosure, a stone wall which surrounded a dwelling house which was excavated by Seamus Caulfield 50 years ago now. It was the first um, excavation he did in this area. Uh, the remains of a dwelling house was found there. Pottery was found um, which has been analysed now and showed evidence for dairy products. Uh, all the material was Neolithic, all the radiocarbon dates were Neolithic five and a half thousand year, years ago, no doubt about the dating of it. Um, you can see that, you can also see a small animal pen and you can see the technique that we actually use for locating these walls. We don't have to dig away the turf now. We can find them by probing with iron rods, we simply push down the, the probe, we can feel the bottom so you can see the shape of, of the ground underneath. Um, we have probes up to four metres long and these walls do extend under the deepest bog here which is four metres deep. Um, so there's no doubt about, about the dating of these walls. And finally, Greta, if this isn't enough, then you just look across and you see beautiful Down Patrick Head. Oh yes, Down Patrick Head there, the headland with the sea stack, Dun Vrishta, which is separated from the island, or sorry, from, from the mainland. Now, it wasn't always an island. Believe it or not, that was only became separated in the year 1393, which is just over six centuries ago. Now, it's quite a gap at the moment between the mainland and the island, but you can see how rapidly it has been eroding. And believe it or not, there's the ruins of two houses on top of that stack from the 14th century. <laughs> The only possible way onto it now is, is, is by helicopter, but no helicopters in the, in the 14th century. But it was recorded in annals uh, in the year 1393, which was people living there. It was a massive storm, some of the land collapsed, and it became separated as an island. Now the people were rescued by ropes.
but it's quite a dramatic place. Uh, but apart from that history, there's also there is a much older history there as well. There are the remains of two Bronze Age uh, barrows, which were burial places. They're low mounds. Um, they've never been opened up, but they seem to be Bronze Age uh, burial places. So you know there was something special going on there for for thousands of years. Well, certainly no visit to Mayo, certainly to North Mayo, will be complete without the Cage of Fields and Down Patrick Head. Greta, thank you for giving us that short overview of an amazing place. Oh, thank you very much. And we hope everybody enjoys their visit to this beautiful Cage of Coast. Mm -hmm.